Welcome to a special edition of Global Conversations. It's Saturday, February 19th, 2022. And things along the Ukrainian and uh, the Donbass border, the front, have intensified significantly. It's very serious. I have my friend and um, an expert on these issues from Moscow, now reporting, Vladimir Kozin. Vladimir, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Hello, Regis. Hi. Well, um, you sent me some information earlier, and then we decided we had to do a show as soon as possible. So um, it is now uh, five minutes to eight Moscow time, mm -hmm. and that's the same time in the Donbass region. Mm -hmm. Vladimir, what have you been hearing and what have you been reading? Now, we're going to talk about Donetsk primarily, I think, tonight. Um, mm -hmm. The first thing you sent me, um, total mobilization of all able-bodied men. Yeah. Tell me what's going on. Well, uh, uh, today's morning, uh, Saturday, February uh, 19th, uh, two leaders of uh, Donetsk uh, uh, People's Republic and Lugansk People's Republic signed uh, separately, because two separate republics, they have signed separately special decrees um, uh, heralding in uh, the total mobilization of all uh, able-bodied uh, men, males. Uh, starting from 18 years old uh, till, as far as I remember, till 65, because uh, persons uh, who are older than that, more than 65, uh, they cannot be called into the armed forces. So the situation is very serious because if you look through uh, daily reports, uh, uh, circulated by special monitoring mission of the uh, organization on security and cooperation in Europe, or uh, in abbreviation OSCE. The latest uh, report says that totally taken into account uh, a combined figure of ceasefire violations in uh, Donetsk and Donbass. Uh, on uh, February 17th, uh, the, this uh, uh, OC mission has recorded totally 870 ceasefire violations by the Ukrainian armed forces. On one, on was, one day? On, on February 17th? On, yes, on one day. On one day. Just to compare, uh, before that, uh, if I give you a figure, for three days, I simply added one by one, starting from February 11th till 13th, there was for three days only uh, 350 uh, ceasefire violations. And the figure I gave you just uh, earlier, 870 that uh, dates back to February 17th, 870 ceasefire violations by Ukrainian side. And uh, Ukrainian armed forces are using uh, heavy artillery and heavy motors, uh, tank uh, guns, uh, multiple rocket uh, launching system, Graz, Merchant, Uragan, and other, uh, uh, other weapons. Okay, Vladimir, uh, Vladimir, I want to be clear about something. Have these uh, 870 ceasefire violations, were they triggered because the Donbass region fired first? Or no. It, it, no. So what is the, really the truth? It, it's, these are all by the violations, according to OSCE, are all by the Ukrainian side, correct? Yes, Ukrainian side has done it because Donbass uh, doesn't have any any um, any desire, any intention to conquer Ukraine, the rest of Ukraine, conquer uh, Kiev or other territories 
in Ukraine. Uh, Donbass never attacked Ukraine starting from 2014 till right now because Donbass uh, uh, on the uh, quite on the opposite uh, suffered um, uh, two uh, aggressions uh, launched by Kiev in uh, 2014, soon after abortive coup in Kiev, and the next year in um, 2015. So it is the third military aggression of Kiev against Donbass. And the, um, Donbass uh, leaders, uh, Donetsk and Lugansk republics, they never claimed uh, territorial, they never had uh, territorial claims on Ukrainian territory and uh, never uh, portrayed themselves as the master of the whole Ukrainian territory. Right. So, now, uh, I want... And this uh, ceasefire violations is being uh, conducted by Ukrainian armed forces and other uh, ultra-nationalist -na uh, uh, non-governmental formations uh, of the Ukrainian side across uh, the whole line of disengagement, having 400 kilometers in the north, in the middle, in the south, in the uh, western part, and uh, in the south part of it. So it's a uh, war actually started, and it one was unleashed by Ukrainian side. Okay, I, I want to clarify a couple of things. Um, number one, you mentioned the war in 2014 and 2015, and it, and it was a one-sided war. Uh, I was there in Lugansk, not at the mm -hmm. time. I was there in 2019, but I, mm -hmm. I talked with people, with journalists, with people on the ground, and I filmed the destruction. Mm -hmm. They, they mm -hmm. weren't just firing long-range artillery, okay? Mm -hmm. They were aerial bombarding Yes, central know, yeah. central parts of I know you know, but I want to make this clear for the people who are listening to us. Right. This has been one sided, and Joe Biden, I understand today, said this is not genocide. I, I don't know what Indeed. you call it when eighteen thousand civilians were killed in that period of time, two thousand and fourteen and two thousand and fifteen. I saw the graves. Mm -hmm. I saw people mm -hmm. who lost relatives, mm -hmm. and I saw the same thing in in Donetsk. Now, the other side, the American side, are claiming that it's not genocide and that um, Ukraine is, is, I don't know what they're saying. Are they saying that Ukraine is defending itself? No, no, it's attacker. Ukraine is attacker. And Donetsk and Lugansk republics are defenders, are defenders. They don't have any territorial claims or whatever role in the Ukrainian society. Yeah. And, and so basically, and, um, they have yes. been self-defense forces. Oh, yes, yes. So they call them, themselves a militia, but it doesn't matter what is the word. Okay. Well, certainly it's uh, armed, armed uh, people, and they are defending the, the territory, historic part of it, unfortunately, given by Vladimir Lenin, the founder of the Russian uh, federation uh, in uh, uh, 1920th of the last century. And uh, Ro uh, uh, Regis, you mentioned uh, the first uh, two attacks when you were there in Donbass. Right, you are. Ukrainian army that time uh, used uh, 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 military aircraft uh, equipped with a rocket, air-based uh, missiles. And they used uh, heavily this kind of weapons. Up to now, not they have not started this kind of uh, exercises. They even used a operational tactical ballistic missile, missile called in Russian Tochka U, or in English Dot U. So it has a tremendous uh, explosive uh, power and uh, many. Uh, uh, residential houses simply just collapsed uh, till, till the ground. So it was very huge attack at that time. But nevertheless, Donbass won these two previous battles and defended its land. 
So today, uh, uh, supported heavily by United States weapons and uh, the weapons and ammunition from the other uh, NATO uh, member countries, uh, Ukrainian army is uh, well equipped uh, than in the past. And uh, it, uh, Ukraine and Kyiv are enjoying moral and political support, uh, uh, very close, without any camouflage, without any kind of hidden sentences, but open, straightforward sentences, even made by uh, the US President Joseph Biden during the recent uh, uh, print conference uh, conducted in uh, US time, uh, February 18th uh, in the White House. And uh, it's uh, crystal clear that uh, it's a kind of a incitement of Kyiv for a large scale military intervention, military attack of Donbass. And recently, I don't know whether you have heard or not, it recently came today, uh, official spokesman of, uh, the, of the Donetsk People's Republic uh, gentleman uh, Edward ba Basurin declared, stated openly in the uh, in the Russian uh, TV and radio stations that they have uh, uh, acquired uh, information concerning secret plan stamped by the uh, current leadership in Kiev. The plan is to wipe out all Russian population from Donbass and capture it within next two, two days or maximum in within five uh, days. So it's a kind of uh, like Nazi, uh, like some other Western countries who supported uh, Hitler uh, before the Second World War erupted, canalized uh, Hitler's aggression towards the Soviet Union now history is being repeated, being repeated from the side of Washington and other uh, capitals of the NATO alliance. Okay, I, just... I, I want to I clarify a couple of things. I, I think I know uh, from other sources, but I want to know if you can confirm that. Number one, are there Russian troops and have there been Russian troops in Donbass, Donetsk and Luhansk actively fighting? Regis, up to now, no single Russian uh, soldier or officer from regular armed forces. We do not have we don't have irregular armed forces. We have only regular um, armed forces and no volunteers. No single Russian soldier or officer uh, has ever crossed Russian Ukrainian border. And so, does that mean that means no trainers, no specialists? No specialists, no trainers, and uh, they we do not have uh, uh, regular uh, Russian armed forces either in Ukrainian territory per se, and in Donbas as well. In Donbas as well, it's not necessary because we are not going to fight with Ukrainians. We do not. We do actually want to defend people of Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. So, and, so, and one more thing, uh, sorry, Regis, for interruption. No single short shot has been fired by Russian regular forces in the direction of Ukraine from any angle, from any direction whatsoever. And despite fake news that Russia will attack this very day, this hour, there have been plenty of such stories, but they have been using to camouflage real military aggression of Kyiv against Donbass. They specifically put pressure. And unfortunately, many people in my country just uh, tried to play a kind of defensive uh, position in terms of information. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. Regis, okay, sorry. let me let me ask you this, because people on the other side uh, are still going to insist, okay, we really believe there's Russian troops, Russian advisors, but 
has Russia provided any weapons or uh, any high tech uh, high technology to assist the Ukrainians? Do you know that? Uh, technology, I don't know, but because uh, it 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 is hardly to believe that uh, high tech. Uh, technologies sh should be given. Technologies are nothing. It's technologies, not weapons. But as to armed uh, uh, various uh, types of uh, arms, yes, because we have to defend and we have to extend helping hand to people of uh, Lugansk and Donetsk who are in a very great trouble. Yeah. And, and uh, by the way, during uh, one more point. No, go ahead. During go ahead. The during just a second, during the first and second uh, Ukrainian aggression, uh, we have been talking about uh, Donbass and Donetsk uh, captured a lot of Ukrainian military hardware, tanks, uh, artillery pieces, mortars, uh, howitzers. Uh, and sidearms as well, many, many things, and destroyed too many, too many items uh, in, the, in the battlefield, but also got them into the uh, warehouses. Regis? Yeah, no, and I saw some of the uh, tanks and uh, artillery that were destroyed, and they've actually become monuments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. And, and Regis, by the way, if uh, the United States government and other countries of NATO alliance like Poland, three Baltic Republics, republics Turkey, the Czech Republics, uh, and some others are supplying uh, the current Kiev regime with the military hardware, 1,500 tons of uh, ammunition and arms have been delivered so far by heavy duty cargo planes, 15 of them. So Russia has the same right to, do, to supply Donbass and Donetsk with its own uh, homemade weapons. So I'm going to ask you about this because it was part of your report to me earlier. Um, tell me about the evacuation of, it sounds like thousands and thousands of people. Uh, I don't know, maybe as as many as 700,000 people are being evacuated from, from no, the Donbass no. region? No? no? Not yet, not yet, no, no, no. 700,000 people, it's a predicament, at the kind of estimate made by Donbass leaders that uh, in, the, in the short, in, the, in a couple of days, in the short run, uh, could, could, could be reached. But currently, so far, uh, uh, Donetsk uh, have uh, dispatched uh, 6,600 uh, people uh, from its republic, from Donetsk People's Republic, and around 10,000 from Lugansk People's Republic. And, uh, but this figure will be increased, and it's uh, only the beginning, because actually, the exodus of refugees from the Donbass into Rostov region, that's the adjacent uh, region or oblast in Russian Rostov. Uh, they are moving to Rostov uh, region, first of all, and uh, 26 other uh, regions uh, of uh, Russia amongst uh, nearly uh, eight, uh, 80 uh, have agreed to accept this uh, poor refugees and to give them shelter, food, and medical assistance, etc. But uh, it, is, it, it is very wise of the uh, Donbass leadership to send three category of people, kids, uh, 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 females, women, and uh, elderly people to a safe heaven to, to Russia. Right. Because they will be totally killed, especially uh, as I told that there is a, uh, a bloody plan to wipe out, to, to destroy, to kill all uh, Russian speaking population uh, and to get only uh, this land again into Ukraine. Well, I just... I, I'm certain that the other side, America, 
uh, and America is the one that's driving this whole thing. And all the talking points come from from Washington, from the State Department, the CIA, whoever. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, evacuations. I've mm -hmm. read recently, and I don't know if you can confirm it. I read that even President Zelensky and the remaining members of the parliament there have been evacuated to Lvov. Is that true? Oh, yes. yes, many of them, uh, and including uh, Western embassies uh, from Kiev, uh, voluntarily have relocated their prem not premises but their staffers to Lvov or Lviv in Ukrainian. It's a uh, um, western part of Ukraine, very close to uh, the border with uh, Moldavia or Moldova, pronounced uh, nowadays. And uh, they are afraid that Kiev will be attacked by whom? By us? No, we do not need Kiev. We are number one in terms of territory uh, all over the world. And Donbass, the same, doesn't want to conquer any inch of Ukrainian territory. But they want simply to live peacefully, comfortably, without in intrusions, without pressure, without intimidations, and without genocide. Genocide is in full swing. Yeah, well, I, I don't need to be convinced of that. But there are a whole mm. lot of people across the Atlantic and in, and in Europe that need to be convinced of that. Now, um, uh, we've talked about the possibility of this conflict escalating. Um, and escalating into what could be the unthinkable, a, a nuclear confrontation. Mm -hmm. um, briefly, do you think that's possibility? There is no need to use nuclear weapons uh, against uh, uh, Ukraine. Donbass doesn't have nuclear capabilities at all. But we are, the Russian Federation, yes, we, we do, we have. But it's not uh, relevant to use them. It's, there is no need because we have uh, non-nuclear conventional uh, warheads and charges capable to destroy any army very quickly by using hypersonic uh, weaponry with pinpoint accuracy, having conventional charges, but very pow far pow powerful and uh, flying very promptly, swiftly, and very quickly, and with great precision. So uh, we tested uh, this uh, um, air-based uh, missile called Kinjal, or in English, Dagger, Dagger, Kinjal. We also uh, tested a Zircon, in English, Cir Zircon, the same name, uh, a missile ca that can be used against land targets and uh, uh, naval uh, platforms. We have plenty of other things to do. So, and uh, we have uh, uh, contemporary howitzers and uh, contemporary tanks much better than Ukrainian army has. And we will ne in inevitably, we will defend, that's for sure, we will defend our sisters and brothers in, uh, in Donbass. Yeah, and I'd like, to, I'd like to point out that I think that somewhere around 700,000 citizens of the Donbass, Donetsk and Lugansk, have got now Russian passports. Right. People uh, have seen uh, uh, the um, hearings uh, at the State Duma recently, and uh, Russian MPs declared that uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, 750,000 of people of Lugansk and Demer, Donetsk are having these passport, passports. And this figure is increasing. So probably it will soon climb up to 800,000 uh, persons, holders of a Russian, identical Russian passports and enjoying all our rights and, uh, and obligations as well. Yeah. And under our constitution, we have to protect Russian population everywhere, like Americans proclaimed uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Even yeah. a single American should be protected by the United States. The same with us. 
even a single Russian person should be protected by the, our might and our just uh, commitment uh, of the Russian Federation. Whenever he or she is located, is living or just uh, trapped. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because um, with so many of these citizens now holding Russian passports, they are Russian. Yeah. Russia has a moral responsibility, an mm -hmm. ethical responsibility, and a legal sure. right, as you just said, to protect their own. And not only that, but isn't it the majority of people in the Donbass and in Lugansk area is Russian speaking people? Almost all of them. Almost all of them and there, are, are they Russian speaking Russian speaking people because prior Vladimir Lenin uh, donated, gave up this territory to Ukraine, uh, if I remember exactly, in 1922, last century. It was a Russian a part of a Russian empire and Russian uh, citizens and Russian people were living there. So all of them are using an official language of Donetsk and uh, uh, Lugansk People's Republics is Russian. Russian ruble is circulated as a single uh, state currency in these two republics. And Russian educational system, radical, uh, Russian medical service uh, is being affected, uh, implemented in, 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 in Donbass. So I'm glad you mentioned that because historical context is critically important for people around the world to understand national borders and history. And you just mentioned it was Lenin, okay? In 19, whatever it was, 22 yeah, or somewhere, 22, yes. who, who just gave the Donbass voluntarily. region. Voluntarily. Yes, voluntarily. Ar ar and arbitrarily. Arbitrarily, yes. Yeah. Yes, and yes. so it's the same situation with the Crimea. And exactly. As, as, as you have mentioned in previous shows, the Crimea was also part of the Russian Empire. In fact, right. as long ago as Catherine the Great, uh, at the same time of the American Revolution. And so mm -hmm. people need to understand this. There was no piracy. There was no annexation. There was no mm -hmm. invasion. And they need mm -hmm. to understand how it is that all these people in the Donbass and in Crimea are really ethnic Russians and Russian speaking. It's a very important yeah. point, and I want to thank you for ma for ma for making that. So let Vladimir. me ask you. Go okay. ahead, go ahead, Vladimir. Yes, uh, it's very. Good. I'm very glad that you mentioned this kind of thing because in 1954, when the Russian Prime Minister Nikita Khrushchev also gave up and uh, gave uh, Crimea to you uh, to Ukraine. Uh, when it was the, uh, the overall the Soviet Union, the USSR, uh, the decision was made by the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR, illegal body to do this kind of thing. Only referendum, a nationwide referendum, could uh, judge what to do with, uh, with the Crimea, whether to give it to Ukraine or not. And by the way, there was not a... a a quorum at this presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR. And final brush in this particular point is that, uh, uh, that um, uh, there is a uh, uh, re recognizable, internationally recognized uh, uh, right for self-determination. It's enshrined in all United Nations documents. So look, Kosovo, decided to, to proclaim independence when I was there as the OC uh, director of the OC regional center. And I am a witnesser how it happened in Kosovo. Kosovo parliament with the majority of Kosovars or Kosovo Albanian, Albanians voted to proclaim independence. Serbs constituted 10% of MPs of Kosovo parliament and the West recognized the Kosovo as independent nation. Donbass and, and Donetsk, they conducted a referendum like people of Crimea. And during, during referendum, they uh, decided 
decided uh, uh, to, to proclaim independence. So it's uh, uh, absolutely uh, uh, correspondent with the contemporary international law. Bridges? Yeah, thank you for that, Vladimir. And coming from someone, as you said, was a direct witness to that, uh, and you were in Kosovo. Um, yes, I, I, I want to speculate now, okay? This is okay. purely speculation. Okay. Uh, and on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Pentagon, the American combined military, Army, Navy, mm -hmm. Air Force, Marines, the Space Force, mm -hmm. now that they have, yeah. do yeah. you think that they are ignorant? Do you think that they really believe they could win this kind of war against Russia, but, they, but even they, against China? Do you think they really believe that? Well, uh, when uh, American generals retire, they are telling truth that the United States will never win the Russian Federation or the People's Republic of China separately, and they will never and uh, it will never win if we are combined, both Moscow and Beijing, because it's a huge, uh, huge uh, military power, huge economy, etc., and in terms of manpower as well. So, so it's impossible. But uh, uh, despite this, and despite some hesitation in the U.S. Uh, military. It's a military industrial complex and uh, uh, their, their puppets like uh, presidents and the administrations in the United States, they uh, would like to intimidate other countries by diktat, by pressure, by threats, by everything, by sanctions, by selling or sending arms and ammunition, by toppling down uh, undesirable leaders in many countries. So uh, I came across the figure calculated uh, not by Russian uh, experts, but by American historians. Since your independence a long time ago, the United States intervened in, in 5,000 cases throughout the world in order to just change layout of regime, changed uh, uh, the mode of uh, rule, changed the economic and financial system, etc., etc. So uh, I think that um, uh, it was, it is, it's very unwise to create a new hot bed of tension in the heart of Europe, in the heart of Europe. Ukraine is like uh, the heart of Europe because Europe stretches from uh, Lisbon, Portugal to the Ural Isle uh, mountains. So if you just look at the map, you will see that Ukraine is something in between, very close to the between uh, part of Europe. And, uh, we have already suffered uh, two wars in the last century. So why to have the third one? There was no a kind of uh, pretext no reason, no grounds to start this war. But all of a sudden, United States decided to create a puppet regime and to, uh, to strangle European, uh, European rivalry of itself, to sacrifice it by uh, putting uh, the entire European continent into a very dangerous and risky war game. Well, that was where I was going to go right now. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, do you think America is willing to sacrifice Europe in what yes. they consider yes. to be a continental war? It will be a continental war. Yeah, but do and you think they're willing to sacrifice Europe, that America is willing to sacrifice? Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, because... Uh, uh, what are they, the Americans, uh, uh, the American administration is uh, claiming? Uh, the, nothing, nothing special. We are, we Americans are indispensable. We are unique. We should uh, or issue orders and all the rest should obey. It doesn't matter whether they are from NATO alliance 
or from non-NATO uh, uh, organization. So, uh, by the way, uh, Joseph Biden uh, many times said that he will not send American GIs to Ukraine to participate in the fighting with Donbass. But true, he already said a lot of American uh, chaps and pals into European countries of NATO, especially uh, to the uh, to the uh, eastern uh, part of uh, Europe. Uh, uh, if you just uh, figure it out that there is a central part, it can be <laughs> you can find an eastern part. I mean, the belt of former Soviet uh, uh, bloc, uh, the former Warsaw Treaty Organization countries. So, but nevertheless, it's a, it's a playing with fire. It's a very dangerous situation. Many people do not understand that it's a very risky game. And what for? For nothing. For just mental illness. That's yeah. it. And, and to maintain American hegemony, American yeah. force and power around the world. It's, it's about yeah. all they have left is, but, is, the, is the hammer. So, the, mm -hmm. yeah, I was just going to add, there are tens of thousands of American kids stationed in mm -hmm. some 40 bases. Uh, there's more mm -hmm. than that. There's maybe 40 bases in Germany alone. But from Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes, and so if, if this spills over into a land-based continental war in Europe, American kids are going to be drawn into that. There's no way that that can be avoided. Yeah, and in my uh, opinion, not only uh, Donbass refugees uh, will find a shelter on the Russian territory, but Ukrainian refugees from the rest of Ukraine will try to find shelter in the adjacent republics in Poland, Romania, Czech Republic, Bulgaria, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and in the heart of Europe, another heart of Europe, in the central part of Europe as well. Do we need this? No, 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 nobody, no, never, no, never. nobody, yeah, nobody, nobody. So let only me, war... oh, please go ahead. No, no, only warmongers, only warmongers would like to have it. Ripe benefits. Look, uh, the US government decided to sell uh, 250 A Abrams uh, tanks to Poland. Does Poland need them badly? No or to sell Patriot missiles, or, or to build a uh, missile defense operational base, base in Redzikova near Slupsk, near Kaliningrad region. So that can house also offensive nuclear tipped missiles of Tomahawk class. Yeah, um, let, let me ask you this, and I only have two more things I wanna ask you. Um, do you think the, the United States senior military command are calling the shots at all? Or do you think they're just following orders? Or what do you what do you think is really happening in America? Uh, could you please paraphrase your question? Because I, I, I failed to grasp okay. uh, the meaning. Okay. Will okay. you please again? Do you think the senior military staff yeah. in the United States? Correct. is part of this war hysteria. Do you think they're uh, looking yes, for war? Yes, yes, yes. Regis, yes, it's a part of uh, history because Lloyd Austin, the Pentagon chief, uh, always just uh, spreading rumors that Russia will, go, will attack uh, Ukraine very soon and uh, uh, asking uh, our Russian defense minister, Mr. Shoigu, uh, just uh, to explain to him what Russia is doing on its uh, own territory. Believe me, Regis, that we can put the same question to the American side. You Americans, what are you doing, not in Ukraine, because you have only advisors and instructors, but what are you doing in the heart of Europe, in the Western Europe, in the Central Europe, in Germany, in Poland, and uh, in Hungary, in Bulgaria and Romania, and in Belgium and Netherlands, et cetera, et cetera. We demand you to go to the continental USA. Go immediately 
and report to us when you just fulfill this kind of thing. It will, if even it, even if it uh, happens, we will never ask the United States administration what, where uh, American troops allocated on the continental USA. That's up to you, whether in Florida or, or Kentucky or West Virginia. It, we do not care. Yeah. And the last thing, you know, you and I just did a show earlier uh, this week about the February 4th agreement between Russia and China. And mm -hmm. a few people have been asking me, and I was interviewed on two American radio stations, one in Washington and one in San Francisco just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they, were, they were asking me, what do you think the end plan is? What is really going on here? And I said, you know, if you just look at it regionally, it's very complicated. If you look at it from a macro, macro view uh -huh. and read that report, as you articulated so well, Russia and, and China are actually working at developing a new world order, which is a multipolar world governed by strict mm -hmm. observance of international law and the UN Charter. And I mm -hmm. described it as the epic battle between mm -hmm. America, the hegemon, fighting for a, to keep a unipolar world versus this different vision. And I think you articulated that document extremely well. And I, I want to encourage people again to get their hands on it and read it so they yes, can really understand. As well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have it. I downloaded it. Mm -hmm. but because it's so important to understand from a macro view, from from up in space, looking down on what's happening all over the globe, in order to understand what's happening, I think they need to put it in that context. Yeah, Regis, excuse me, if we have a couple of minutes, I yes. would like to, uh, to tell you something. Uh, look, what's the, uh, the end game of what is happening in, in Ukraine or in Donbass nowadays? The answer is very simple. If Kyiv dislikes the population of Donbass, hate them. Please leave them. Let them build their own societies, their own country, if you dislike them. Our intention is do not kill people in Donbass. Leave them also. Forget about them. People do not like to live under umbrella in, in the same house with an ultra-nationalist regime in Kiev, entrenched in Kiev. That's the, that's the, it's, it's a crux of the matter. It is very important factor. We had a film a long time ago concerning a, a, a person, a main actor, who was able to uh, dive and live underwater because he had a special lungs transmitted from the shark. It's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. And on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a beach, uh, the guy approached uh, to a, a nice uh, looking girl and wanted to dance with her. But she decided, no, I do not want to dance with you chap. And this uh, guy called Ichtiander said, don't you see that she doesn't want to dance with you? So, Kiev, don't you see that Donbass does not want to live with you in the same house, under one roof, under one dictator? If if you do not see this, you will be punished for that. Thank you. And I, I would add, and I know you're going to agree, I think that the real purpose behind this conflict in Ukraine is that the United States would like to maintain pressure, constant pressure, uh, to destabilize Russia and to extend Russia economically and militarily, which is, is really foolhardy.
But, but Vladimir, I want to thank you so much because people everywhere now, everywhere, uh, have this on their lips and on their minds constantly. It's 24 mm. seven in America. Uh, they, they just won't stop talking about it. So we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. Yes, thank you very much, Regis, for inviting me for this very important, uh, very acute uh, talk show. Uh, as, I, um, as you have seen, I forwarded to you a kind of uh, very short uh, text of what is going on, uh, the recent developments in Donbass. And I will continue uh, this practice in the, fu in the future as well. Thank because, you so much. Uh, you see, nobody, I, it's, an, uh, it's an open, uh, it's not a secret. It's my private and personal desire to create such a, my own reports. You can call them Cousins reports or Vladimir's reports. Yes, uh, because I have to familiarize the other, uh, the other people, the other side of the world and to disclose a kind of fakes that are being disseminated very openly, unfortunately, in the Western media, especially the story with this uh, kindergarten on the Ukrainian uh, territory controlled by Ukrainian armed forces. <laughs> Laughable. Artillery shell from eight kilometers fired into this building in such a way it made a hole and destroyed some bricks, but all balls are where where are still standing, lying laying on the shelf, on the shelf, and no single window glass have been destroyed or uh, shattered into pieces. It's a, a prefabricated story, and by the way, Western newsmen appeared at this very moment. Such no a suffering, no such splinters, yeah. no splinters. If, uh, the, uh, if, if uh, this artillery shell exploded, if it is not exploded because there are no splinters, where is the shell? Thank you very much, Regis. I wish you uh, every success, um, be strong and uh, healthy and in a nice mood despite this very tragic developments we are facing. Let's put our fingers crossed and hope for the best. Yes, God is with us. <laughs>